All the errors you see here on this form are defined through a single ZOT schema, including the errors you might want to display only on some items inside an array. And that's a feature Tanstack Form just recently added. This is chapter 5 of the Tanstack Form tutorial, and today we're gonna see some tips and tricks on how to have full control of this new feature. To begin with, this is our ZOT schema, and let's see how we can integrate it into our form. First of all, in this case, we might want to add some validators. And here on this demo, I'm going to use the on change, but you're free to use all the other options, like on blur, on submit, or on mount. Here, you're supposed to write a function that is our validator function. And here, you get some more context about the form API or your current value. But in this case, since we want to use the ZOT schema, all you really have to do is to type user schema here and by passing the user schema to the validator function you will basically get all the errors generated by parsing your value through this schema but you also need an extra step that is in order to get the errors directly inside tanstack form you have to specify a validator adapter that in this case will be our zod validator as you notice here, I had to import Zod validator that is not in the main Tanstack form package, but you have to install it separately. But in this case, you can find Zod validator under Tanstack Zod form adapter. And in any case, if you scroll down in our official documentation, you will find that we support Zod, but also Yub and Valibot using exactly the same approach. The only difference is that instead of installing Zod form adapter, we're going to use Yup form adapter or Valibot form adapter. But before moving on, now that we have a user schema, we might also want to define our type. It is user and counts directly from Zod. And if I now remove the cast from here, this will obviously generate errors because now this is never. And if I try to use my new user type here, I get an error on the validator. And the really simple solution is that we also have to specify that we're using a Zod validator and you can directly import this type from the same package with the Zod validator function. And with that, we can generate the errors from the user schema, but those are still inside the form state. Let's see how you can show them to your users. And the easiest solution is to create a field info component where you pass the meta of your field directly taken here in the render prop of your component. In this case, I'm just passing field.state.meta and inside field info, I make sure to return now if there is nothing to show. And you might also want to add some extra checks. For example, only show the errors if the input has been touched. With that, if we go back on top of our schema, we can see that our name needs three characters and so is the surname, but the name also needs a capital letter. If you now go on the browser, you will see that the error only appears when I start typing. I can keep going and the first error is gone. I add a capital letter and there it is. But now if we want to add the errors on the array, this is slightly different. Let me show you. First of all, we say that our array must have at least one element and this is fairly simple let's see where this interest array is and here i might want to add just at the bottom of our children's so this is where all the elements are defined and this is the perfect place to put one more of these filled in for components and on the browser i see that there's no error because i haven't touched this component yet i can add one element and again this is valid so no errors but now if i remove an element well there's the error we just added, at least one skill is required. But let's now go on an even deeper level. We want to show here an error if this input is touched and is also empty. The first thought you might have is, okay, I get to the component, that is the interest name. I go right below the input and I basically do exactly the same. I add this subfield here and make sure that field info gets the meta from this component. This solution kind of works, but let me show you what happens in the browser. We now have the error right next to our input, which in this specific case might not be exactly what we were looking for. So how we can fix that? Because I want the error of this component not inside my field definition, but on a different place on my DOM that in this case is right here below the row that is generated from each interest, but I no longer have access to subfield. So how can I do that? The very first naive solution you might have is that, well, here I can access to my form and I can say I want to get the state and on field meta, here I can get directly to that element. I can find the string here to get to the interest array and only and that index on the name field. But if I do that, even though this seems correct at first and also compiles, if I go back on the browser and try again, you will find that nothing happens the error doesn't appear and actually 
You notice it appeared when I added a new element. I can try that again. I type something, I delete, nothing happens. I add a new element and only now this is rendered. The answer is that accessing to the value with this syntax works, but it is not reactive. This is actually the topic of the previous chapter of the task type form tutorial, just in case you want to have a look. And the solution here to make sure that our value is reactive is to use the form.subscribe component. With that, I can pass a prop that will be the selector, which you notice is exactly the same. And now I can render a component that will be our children. And in this case, I get this field meta that are going to re-render this inner component every time till meta changes. So with that, I can simplify my code. And as you notice, the only difference with the previous approach is that I wrapped everything inside form.subscribe, but still passed field meta to this field info. And with that, if I try again, now it is 100% reactive. So as soon as the error is added to task form through the dot schema, the subscribe component will re-render and the error will display. And the cool thing is that in this case, only this component will render, not everything else. But as I mentioned, there's a video specifically on that on my channel and you will probably find it floating around here. If you're interested in learning Tantac Farm, you can find my full playlist on my channel. And if you have some more specific questions, you can find me in the official Discord server. That was it for today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.